Hello Neat PJ aspirants, welcome back to the PYQ series. I am your guide and mentor Dr. Amit Kumar Singh and this is Microbiology Simplified. In this video of PYQ series, I will be discussing a very important topic Diagenic E. coli. I hope you are going through the videos and you, and you must remember the slogan that PYQ a day keeps fear away. So always remember this and do like that, do a PYQ in a day. This PYQ is very important. In this video, I will discuss about the various strains of E. coli and their pathogenicity and several other, other things. So, let's start the video. PYQ number 10, Diagenic E. coli. The question asked in the examination was to correctly match the strains of E. coli with the respective pathogenesis. So, I will just first solve the question and then I will discuss in detail about this. Okay. So, the C, the first is ETEC. ETEC stands for Introtoxinic E. coli. <coughs> so, it will produce toxins and it may be heat labile or heat stable. So, this ETEC will produce heat labile toxin and if you have gone through the bacterial toxin chapter, so you must know that the heat labile toxin acts by activation of adenyl cyclase. Then intrahemorrhagic E. coli will lead to hemorrhage and this hemorrhage occurs by action of the toxin on the vascular endothelial cell and that toxin is virocytotoxin. Okay? So, this is the answer for this EHEC toxin produced against vascular endothelial cells. Then the EPEC, EPEC basically leads to attachment and effacement of the mucosal surface. So, attaching and effacing lesions seen in case of EPEC and then EIEC the name intro invasive E. coli. So, it will lead to invasion of the intestinal epithelial cell. So, the answer to this question is A1, B4, C3. 3D2. This option C is correct. Okay. So, how I, how I have answered this question to know this, just go through this video. It is very simple video and it will not be too much lengthy. So, just finish it very fast. Okay. So, the first one is EPEC, enteropathogenic E. coli. And pathogenicity of enteropathogenic E. coli is localized adherence of the bacteria to the apical in, intestinal epithelial cells and then attachment and effacement okay so it will first adhere and then it will attach and efface so this localized adherence will occur by virtue or are dismediated by a type 4 pilus which is known as bundle forming pilus okay bundle forming pilus in short bf Okay, and this BFP is coded by this EPEC adherence factor plasmid. Okay, this is coded by EPEC adherence factor plasmid in short EAF. Okay, EAF plasmid. And this attachment effacement lesion, the gene which is responsible for this is located in this pathogenicity island which is known as locus for enterocyte effacement lee gene okay so this lee gene is responsible for attachment and effacement lesion and in this epc there is no production of toxins that is no st no lt no vt and also there is no invasion and it involves the upper part of a small intestine and what it will lead to it will lead to watery diarrhea and persistent diarrhea and the primer primarily it will transmitted from person to person which is the most common mode of transmission seen in case of epc and it involves commonly the young children and neonate in developing countries and it is an important cause of infantile diarrhea infantile diarrhea in developing country remember this important cause of most common cause of infantile diarrhea in developing countries epc strain okay and how to diagnose diagnosis will be done on the basis of detection of the gene responsible for the pathogenicity and the most common gene as i told you is this bfp this bfp is coded by the bfp gene in the e eaf plasmid and this eae that is e coli attachment and effacement gene which actually codes the intimin protein which is responsible for adherence, adhesion and effacement. And then this EAF gene, which can be done by either DNA probes or PCR. 
on the basis of absence or presence of this BFP, this EPEC is classified into two types. One is typical and one is atypical. So, if it is present, it is called as typical EPEC and if it is not present, that is it, if it is absent, it is called as atypical EPEC. Okay. So, this is all about EPEC. Now, about ETC, that intro toxigenic E. coli, as the name suggests, toxigenic, that means it will produce toxins. Of so the pathogenicity is because of production of toxins. So, two types of toxin are produced heat labile toxin and heat stable toxin. The mechanism of this was discussed in the bacterial toxin video. So, go through that video if you want to know the mechanism of LT and ST. But apart from producing toxin, it also leads to invasion. Okay. And the adhesion of this bacteria occurs by a fimbria which is called as colonization factor antigen. Colonization factor antigen. And it also involves the small intestine similar to EPC. And what it, it will lead to as it is a toxigenic E. coli. So, it will lead to acute watery diarrhea. And what will happen? Fever will be absent, there will be no fever as it is toxigenic and also the stool, it will show no blood, no mucus and no fecal leukocytes. Okay, so this is the characteristic of acute veterinary diarrhea caused by ETC strains. And occasionally it may be severe, but that is very occasional. So, commonly it causes acute watery diarrhea. And this acute watery diarrhea is a common cause of childhood diarrhea in developing countries. Childhood diarrhea in developing countries. And it also leads to diarrhea among the traveler to the developing countries. So, it is one of the commonest cause of traveler's diarrhea. Remember this, the strain which is responsible for traveler's diarrhea of E. coli is ETEC most commonly. Apart from that, there is one more strain I will tell you. And the source of infection is contaminated food and water. Okay. And the genetic element is present in the plasmid. Okay. And lab diagnosis by demonstration of toxin either by latest agglutinin test or ELISA or it can be detected by the gene encoding the toxin by PCR or DNA probes. Okay, so this is all about ETC. Remember these points, you will be able to answer all the questions. Now, EIC, intero invasive E. coli. So, as the name suggests, it will lead to invasion. It will invade the colonic epithelial cell. Now, it will involve the large intestine. The first to involve the small intestine, this EIC involves the large intestine, invade the colonic epithelial cells. And it will also lead to intracellular multiplication and cell to cell spread. This cell to cell spread by occur by utilizing the host cell actin filament. Okay. And the, it commonly leads to watery diarrhea. So, this pathogenicity of EIC actually resembles the pathogenicity of Shigella actually resemble the pathogenicity of Shigella. What is the difference between this EIC and Shigella is there are three differences. First, the infective dose. The infective dose of EIC is very high compared to Shigella. Second, this is less virulent and as it is less virulent, it more, it commonly it leads to mild watery diarrhea which is self-limited okay so it commonly leads to mild watery diarrhea but it may progress or it may develop dysentery resembling sigilla that is sigillosis so sigillosis like dysentery may be seen and what will be the feature of that which and it will be characterized by it will characterized by fever abdominal pain tenesmus and scanty stool 
containing mucus blood and inflammatory cells so the thing which were not present in etc will be present in eiec especially when it is causing dysentery and again the source of infection is food and water the primers, prime, prime source of infection in case of EPEC was person to person. However, in case of ETEC and EIEC, it is through contaminated food and water. Remember this. And again, the responsible genetic element is the large virulence plasmid, similar to that of ETEC. Diagnosis is by detection of this invasive gene that is in gene by PCR or DNA probes or also this invasion can be shown in cell culture by using HELA and HEP2 cell. The cell invasion assay can be can be done to show the pathogenicity. Okay. Now coming to the EHEC or STEC. This STEC SIGA toxin producing E. coli. So obviously it will produce SIGA like toxin. So this SIGA like toxin or of two types SIGA like toxin type 1, SIGA like toxin type 2 which is also known as virocytotoxin 1 and virocytotoxin 2. Why it is known as virocytotoxin? Because of its cytotoxic effect on viro cell lines. Okay. And the primary target for this virocytotoxin is the vascular endothelial cells. And that is why it is the commonest cause of bloody diarrhea seen in E. coli. Because of the primary target of the cytotoxin is vascular endothelial cell and it also involves the large intestine similar to EIC that is the colon okay so apart from this toxin production this attachment effacement which i told you in epec may be seen in some strains of stec and those strain which which leads to ae by virtue of this locus of enterocyte effacement along with this virocytotoxin those strains of ETEC are known as EHEC that is enterohemorrhagic E. coli and those which have got only VT but no AE that is those are known as non EHEC STEC so don't get confused EHEC is basically strains from the STEC which produces the attachment effacement mechanism of pathogenicity apart from urocytotoxin production okay and it is an important cause of bloody diarrhea among all ages especially in industrialized countries okay remember this cause of bloody diarrhea in industrialized country is EHEC and apart from bloody diarrhea it leads to hemorrhagic colitis and hemolytic uremic syndrome especially in children below five years of age and the serotype of ehec which is responsible for most of the infection is o157 s7 okay and this o157 s7 usually do not ferment sorbitol okay and the genetic element which is responsible for this is the xtx1 or xtx2 gene encoding bacteriophage the lab diagnosis as i told you this o157 s7 does not ferment sorbitol so if you use sorbitol mcconkey agar the sorbitol will not be fermented by o157 s7 but the rest of the e coli will ferment it so it will help to identify the serotype apart from this to confirm the diagnosis immunoassay for the sega toxin can be done and also the xtx gene can be detected by pcr or dna probes so these are the various lab diagnoses of ehec and stec okay now the fifth one is EAEC that is intero aggregative E. coli. So again the pathogenicity on the basis of name it will leads to aggregative or diffuse adherence. Okay, aggregative or diffuse adherence and this adherence is resembled like a stack brick. So this stack brick is characteristic of EAEC stacked brick appearance of adherence and this adherence occur because of several fimbriae. And also it produces toxins such as PET and 
अदर हीट स्टेबल टॉक्सिन नोन एज इंट्रो एग्रीगेटिव हीट स्टेबल टॉक्सिन एंड लाइक ई पी ई सी एंड ई टी सी इट इन्वॉल्व द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन एंड नॉट द लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन इन्वॉल्व इन ई आई सी एंड ई एच ई सी एंड वॉट इट विल लीड टू इट विल लीड टू एक्यूट और परसिस्टेंट म्यूकॉइड डायरिया ओके एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम ई टी सी आई टोल्ड यू अपार्ट फ्रॉम ई टी सी दिस इज एन एन इमर्जिंग कॉज ऑफ ट्रेवलर्स डायरिया सो ट्रेवलर्स डायरिया इज कॉज्ड बाई ई टी सी एंड ई ओके रिमेंबर एंड द मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन इज अनोन बट इट इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट क्रॉप कॉज ऑफ क्रोनिक डायरिया इन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज and again the genetic element is chromosomal or plasmid associated adherents and toxin genes and tissue culture sa for aggregative or ad adherents or pcr for aggr gene which is a regulator gene which regulates the aggregation it will be helpful for lab diagnosis so this is all about the various strains of e coli a quick summary of this so what is important to remember is that epc pathogenicity is ae lesion that is attachment defacement lesion leads to watery diarrhea and is the commonest cause of infantile diarrhea etc is because of toxin ltnst it leads to acute watery diarrhea no fever no blood no mucus no fecal leukocytes and it is a common cause of childhood diarrhea in developing countries and travelers diarrhea and eic leads to invasion it leads to watery diarrhea and occasional diarrhea which resembles seagull losses so there will be fever uh, tenesmus abdominal pain and mucus blood and inflammatory cells ehc stc because of seagull like toxin or virus like toxin and leads to bloody diarrhea so only e coli strain which is responsible for bloody diarrhea is ehc although dysentery can be seen in eic but it is very occasional okay remember this and it is a common cause of bloody diarrhea in industrialized country and the most common strain is responsible for the infection is oo517s7 which is the most pathogenic also and the culture medium is used for diagnosis is smag that is sorbitol mekonki agar and this is asked in one of the examination this thing okay and then eac what is characteristic is stacked brick appearance of the aggregation and leads to mucoid diarrhea and it is apart from this etc it is an also important cause of travelers diarrhea so remember this you will be able to answer all the question asked on diarrhea e coli so see you next time pyq a day keeps fear away remember this take care bye bye